Kevin Ellip from ksound.com. In this video, we're just gonna focus on some of the cosmetic changes. There's not much that changed from the start page. It, it, in, in fact, they look exactly the same. I just changed my my profile artist picture. And that's, <laughs> that's probably the only thing that I've changed. If we were to go into our song, um, this is something I was working on earlier, but just like a few things that I noticed. If you are on different sections, say like the arrange window from the piano roll or the browser, you notice this red border. I wonder if you can change that color, but you now have indication as to where you are. I don't know if this is something that was taken from Pro Tools because I'm not a Pro Tools user. However, I am a Logic Pro user. And one of the biggest thing that we were using was notes, being able to add notes per track and even even project notes. So now we have you just have to activate it. You, you may not see it right away, but you have to come in here and uh, hit the this uh, gear or wrench, this tool icon and then say show track notes. And then you can go ahead and, and type away, you know, at uh, making notes per track, which is huge for me because this is this was a part of my workflow. And so if you hit I, which takes you to the information tab or the inspector, you will notice that there is a, a little note icon right here. And you can pull up this little window here. Now you can, this is cool. So now this is what I typed here down below. And we can just go down and, and, and view our notes. Here is the actual song notes. This is awesome. I love this. This is pretty dope. And the information, okay, cool. Okay, so if you click on it, it takes you immediately to the metadata, the meta information for the track itself. And this is where you could add pictures, whatever. And I always thought it was pretty awesome that Studio One allows you to add uh, information, um, pictures, your, your, uh, yeah, your pictures to your, to your MP3. So when you export them out, they come with that. Something that I wanted in Logic and that wasn't possible so this is really cool all right so looking down below you notice some changes in the way that things look to me is it looks a whole lot cleaner in my opinion i i like the way that it that it looks this this looks a whole lot better in my in my opinion um as you can see they they made some changes to um where the mutant solos now it's in this block more of a emboss look you know they made changes to the the meter is more skinnier and the um the numbers are outside versus the inside of them um this is pretty cool i like this um now this here i just thought that this w could be something that i like i don't know change but it's, it just happens to be an icon that will, will allow you to pull up your pull up your macro your macro functions your features or whatever you can like um um pretty much assign these knobs and buttons to whatever you want them um if you got a midi device or whatever like that so that's so that's how you activate that that's that's cool and then there's other things around studio one that supports the new updates now we have the the track you can view your chord when you're doing chord detection also this here this is a pretty cool feature now this feature here is what allow let's see what it what we call this the the toggle ripple edit okay so we was doing this with um we we, we were doing this if you were using a ranger you know a little block area where you can you know add your your verse your intro chorus hook bridge whatever right so when when we need to make uh changes to to the song and i'm just gonna make changes i'm i'm gonna have to undo but so if if i need to make changes say i want to arrange this and move this back right here 
um, I can do that. Or if I just want to like push it in between, I can make those changes with no problem, which is really cool. Or if I want to replace something, you know, it'll just replace it. But the thing was, like, if you pull up a track like this, I mean, you got to listen to the whole track to see where the course is, where the intro, you know, where the verse, you know what I mean? Um, this one looks pretty simple, but, you you know, it's it's not that simple a lot of times. You know, it, it, this is not your waveform. So it, it it is cool. It's cooler just to be able to do stuff like this, being able to chop in areas. You know what I'm saying? Let me just create a... Uh, section over here and let's just copy this and let's work on this side and see if um if this feature works so okay so for the, for the sake of this video we're just gonna make and i'm not gonna play it well maybe i should but i just want to show you like different like the the wave how it, how it will change as i as i make um make these changes and just right there well let well, let me show you that based on what you just seen me do this works great for podcasts or uh editing you know your vocal for me a lot of times i'm doing voiceover work and i'm doing like um ands and uh, you know, and I'm pausing and, and, and you know, and to, to make it more cleaner, I want my voice to sound natural, but like I'm going in the flow and I'm not pausing so much. So this is great. This was something I was able to do in Logic Pro. It was I forget the term, but it was like a, a way of shifting your audio without doing stuff so say for instance if i turn this off this is what we had to do before so if, if i was to cut this right and say like i don't want something in between there and take that out and then i had to like highlight all of this and then move it over like that you know what i'm saying but now i don't have to do that no longer just select you know just turn on this toggle here and just delete this and everything will shift back which is pretty dope i like that so um okay so we're just going to keep going so um what i was trying to show you guys <laughs> was uh like for arranging your tracks without without no longer needing the the arranger you know because we know that takes time so now we can like just take your audio and say i want to just to replace that move that back like that or say i want to come here and put that right here it it definitely like you got to be careful though because it will t it will definitely shit when, well yeah i'll put that right here and um yeah this is this is pretty cool like this is an easy way to like man i i like this this is this is a really easy way to shift stuff and you still keep the the uh the resolution of your track like everything will stay in place nothing get out of whack everything seems to be together but if you want to make those changes then you can you can do so you can still use the the uh crossfade um if if there is a, a cut you made and it's not you know it doesn't it's not as natural as it clicks or something like that you can definitely handle that with crossfading or whatever that right there is game changing for me it makes editing in studio one four even more powerful than before those are just some of the things i've noticed right off the bat um i'm not going really deep into everything they've done but like these are like some of the game changing features i thought was pretty cool um say you if you're tired of this color here i i still like the dark the dark colors but if you want to go and change now it supports light so now we can get that white that white look um this was more so what studio one two was doing when i discovered um it it, it looked more more like this 
Um, so, you know, you could definitely get that that vibe back if, if that's what you're into. Um, I think this will be cool if, like, every once in a while I want to change things up, get a different vibe, gain inspiration. So this is this is this is really cool. This is nice to have to be able to do that. You know, I was always playing around with the colors in here doing the best I can but if I just want to just go totally the opposite of what I'm what I was doing before I can I have the option to do so but I, I like the dark I, I like this this is pretty cool this it was like that I think I'm gonna just kind of brighten things up here um I don't know you know th I just this is this is really cool the yeah I like that so like you guys already know like inspiration with your dog is everything you know what i mean like look staring at the same because just think of it like this you're staring at the same screen <laughs> the same workflow every day all day somehow you're going to lose inspiration and so it's always great to know that you can play around with colors the other thing um i i failed to mention but um the fact that this whole this whole channel strip is colored now it used to be just like you know, it took on the color of this background here and we just add plugins in here and whatnot. Right. And the color was just, you know, per track on, you know, from this line below. But now we have the whole thing is 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 highlighted, you know, and this is cool. So like if you was to like um, collapse your track, make it smaller, you have these extra things that pops out because it's this right here is like you said it and you forget it you, you, i don't necessarily need to see that this is coming out of main all the time you know what i mean at the moment when you're creating a track you don't need to see that so i'm just gonna like collapse that right so you know cool <laughs> um so now to get the the sins back it's a little bit tricky like you got to really be careful and i wish there was uh some type of indication like maybe m maybe raise this little bar here like i don't know give it a little tab or something there indicating that the sins are right there or or maybe don't have the sins like the sins are just hidden so it's like you got to come at the tip right here then pull the sins up you know what I mean? So it it could that can get confusing. Maybe there's another another way, and maybe, maybe there's a button or something that make them pop up, or whatever. But like by default, like it's just hidden. And it's, I guess it's cool that it that it can be hidden like that, you know. But I I like messing with the sins because I'm constantly sending. Or maybe okay, let me do this. Maybe if I no, nah, I couldn't even do that because I, I like to drag and drop my effects. You know what I'm saying? And there's not even a command. Like, I couldn't even press a key to, to say, okay, you're sending. You want to send that. So you have to go here and pull them up. Then I can send. I can just drag one and then, you know, my send track will pop up. So, I mean, that's cool. I like I'm a studio one user, so I I'm I'm taking it. I'm I'm and I feel like as we move forward there will be upgrades or updates and things will improve. I would also love them to see I would also love to see them update these the these um just the way that this look like this is this this is the design of Studio One Two or Studio One One, and it it has not changed whatsoever. So let's see, the EQ is like they are all the same. You know, it's got this. We got this new design and everything looking pretty pretty slick, and this the same. I mean. And you know, I I just would like to see a a a a better design being implemented. They already started with the fat channel, and I and I and I think that that's where they're going. They they um they're taking a time and they moving you know to each each track. So this one, 
the fat channel i think had another look and they went in totally like gutted this out and and changed the way that it looks so um this is pretty cool and i think this matches with where we're going and so i think as time progresses you know this is something that they will definitely look at okay and and yeah so cool big ups again to studio one personas the personas family um i dig what you guys are doing um this 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 program right here is definitely a powerhouse for me and my workflow um i would love to see more integration with um video because i like to compose the film and to be able to export straight to the video would be very well appreciated and take a look at the midi i think the midi is still not there i have not really did any uh extensive production yet because i'm just learning you know all of the things that studio one came with but um um if you guys could take a look at the midi function you know making that better because i i when i still insert notes i noticed a couple times that my notes weren't right right there as i as you know so if you visit that i would appreciate it and you guys you know they listen to us someone else had something that they that they want you know they was they was talking about the beat uh beat detection being able to, to te detect the the beat which it will be really cool but uh, you know if there's not a lot of people complaining about it they're not gonna they're not gonna visit that that you know they're not gonna put it in there so that's the fortunate side of of studio one you know um maybe perhaps they need to consult like people who actually make music <laughs> I, I, I would say people who make music, who make beats, who does this for a living, you know what I'm saying, instead of recording all the time, um, you need one of those type of guys on the team to just go in and overhaul this thing with stuff that we are, you know, and what we are wanting. So, um, again, Kevin Ellup, on set from ksound.com. Remember, music is art. You're the artist. Paint your picture. 